It's an exciting day today. Today's the day we go on our hike. We've been planning this for quite a while. Linda is the leader of our expedition, and we're going to go on a hike that's just within the edges of Joshua Tree National Park, where Chuckawalla Bill built a stone cabin, and he lived in it from 1932 to 1936. This is going to be great, especially if we can find it. And the trail, well, first of all, it's very hard to find. The trail is either nine miles round trip or 18 miles round trip. And uh, I'm way out of shape. Uh-oh. person entering there on does so at their own risk so here we go okay we've been going about 20 minutes half an hour and we finally made it to the trailhead um, there's a parking lot up here Kim didn't realize that you could drive all the way up here so uh, and then we came across a sign I don't know if you could read it or not It says no shooting and there's a couple bullet holes right through it so somebody decided that was okay to shoot here so anyway we're just about ready to make it to the trail head and uh, <clears throat> we're on Long Canyon Trail trail Hopefully I can make it, and these women don't show me up, but you never know. Well, we've only gone a short ways on the uh, trail so far, and unfortunately we have found a severed leg. It's pretty disgusting. Uh, kids, turn away if you're watching this. Uh, adults, okay, get ready to get sick. Look. Seems to be a fiberglass leg, actually. Maybe it's a <laughs> Yep, I think it's, uh, I think it's okay. All right, let's continue. Well, it's beautiful up here. About 1,762 feet of altitude. Still climbing. Um, Rock formations are beautiful. Look at this. But we're definitely climbing, I can feel it. Look at this. We're in the canyon. Chuckawalla Bill, born August 2nd, 1875 died January 11th, 1950. 
was a Spanish-American war veteran, a sapper in the British Army during World War II, a prospector, a cook, and vagabond. His birth name was William Anthony Simon, although he most frequently used the name Anthony W. Simmons. There's Linda up ahead. So Linda, what do you think? What do you think of the trail so far? I love it. Let's hope that my GPS... What do you say? I hope my GPS keeps working. We're about a third of the way there. Let's pray that it doesn't go out and I lose my signal. Now wait a minute, you said we were a third of the way there about an hour ago. I know. We still have a ways to go to get there. <laughs> we're at 1,760 feet of altitude. Oh wow. That's so. pretty good. Yeah, yeah. That's like not bad. That. Yeah, we've been climbing all along. So was there a lot of pressure on you uh, for this uh, this hike, this trail today? No, not at all. I'm excited about it. Well, you know, you, you heard about the winds. The winds were going to be high. You don't know about the winds. Yeah. We had some terrible winds come through where you couldn't even breathe outside because yes. of the dust and sand. But that didn't worry you? Not at all. No, not once. Not once. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Enjoying it very much so far. Absolutely love it. Well, that's great. You heard it. Exactly. We're still okay. We're still alive. Sounds like we may have another two miles to go, but we made it to the first uh, marker, which I believe we turn left here. Um, the marker is this old abandoned truck. Or is it a car? Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's drivable. <laughs> the other thing is, look at these exposed rocks. You know, it seems like a rock hound would be over here looking at the rocks very carefully to see if he can find anything. There's some quartz. I don't see any gold in it. Put it back. Well, I took a break. Uh, the three women have carried on. Linda, of course, is probably already up there. Although I'm looking at my map, Gaia GPS, and I started recording it a little bit after we got on the trail. And it says we've gone four miles. And uh, according to what I read, <coughs> This uh, Chakwala cabin is nine miles. So does that mean we're not even halfway? My hips started hurting, so I had to take a break. Um, got some water, and uh, I'm gonna continue on. But uh, it's beautiful here, and it's really nice out here by myself. It's kind of cool. I wish there wasn't so much wind. It's beautiful, just beautiful. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to point. There's a little uh, gecko. He's right underneath this bush here. It's pretty, sort of green. Oh, there's two of them there. It's a husband and wife. There's two of them. We see a lot of wood. We see a lot of tin laying around. Um, but uh, and we thought it was up that canyon right there. But so far, we haven't found it. And I'm having doubts if we're going to make it and find it. But here's the kind of tin we find out here. Let me show you. Seems to be a lot of it here, there, and everywhere. Don't know why. So anyway, I've decided to guard the entrance to this area while the t three women have gone up up there 
to um, see if it's just around the corner maybe. I hear somebody talking. I don't know if they're coming back or not. It might be a Oh, they found it. All right, I'm coming. Hey, how about that? They found it. All right, here we go. Well, that's great news. They found it. No signs whatsoever out here, which is probably good. We don't need, need any idiots painting graffiti all over it and crap like that. So, this is uh, Chuck Walla Bill's cabin and uh, put some information about and story about him being up here. I know there was one story about a priest who came up here to visit him because he was, you know, way out in the middle of nowhere. And the priest um, sat down to dinner. Chuck Walla Bill, he, uh, he made a dinner and he said, uh, yep, this is fish. And the priest ate and the priest liked it. It was actually a lizard. So <laughs> that's one of the funny stories. So we'll be up there shortly. It's beautiful back here. Take a look. structure right here of his cabin. Let me see if you can see it up there. Came around the corner. This right here. There's even a window up there. Okay, we're going up. I can barely climb. I can barely lift my legs. There's a bone. A lot of bones on this road up here. Oh my god, look at this. Oh, I can barely lift my leg. Oh, and there's a little seat. Yeah. There's the fireplace. Look at that. There's his name. Chuck Walla Bill. Nice. Look at that. It's pretty cool. He made a nice little house here. Look at the bench he's got. I'm going to sit down on this bench. Ah. Yeah. Oh, this is great. Uh, good job. Good job, Linda. Oh, we had an outdoor kitchen? <laughs> what do you call this? Yeah. I guess. So we're just exploring Chuck Walla Bill's um, old cabin from the late 1800s, early 1900s. And it's really, really cool. Here's a little bench. Here's his window. Oh yeah, you could look out here and see if anybody's coming. And then over there, got some old bottles. One of his pets up there that died. Just joking. Fireplace. What is that? 
got turquoise. 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 Beautiful. Let's take a look around and see how he lived here. There's Linda. Linda was the hero in getting us here. She kept saying, yeah, it's just around the corner. It's just around the corner. <laughs> mile after mile. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is where he kept food or things that he wanted to keep cool and protected. So he built basically like a little, uh, a little uh, cooler. I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, root cellar, I think is what somebody called it. Now up above, you see that tin? There's tin all over this valley. Well, there used to be tin going across the top of this structure, so he had a roof. Now there was his door. I'm not sure why this is all open. I wonder if it was closed up at one time. Oh yeah, yeah. But here's another window. And he might have had a door at one time. Yeah, look how squared, it off, squared off it is with that mud or concrete. So there was some kind of door or structure right there. Very cool, Chuck Walla Bill's cabin. Here is where his outdoor kitchen was. Um, you can see this still here, that metal. He's got a little grate up there actually still too. That's cool. Here, here was the chimney, right here, right there. Yeah, he's got a chimney right here too. Here was his entrance. Some old metal structure. There's bones in here from things being cooked, I'm sure. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah here's a couple little vertebrae. See that? There's one over there. Right there, vertebrae, or oh, right, right. and then there's one back there. So here's the tin, some of the tin that came from his roof. Right now, we're going to go back and take a look and see if we can find where the uh, spring was that uh, he actually used for water. That's one thing you need, you need water out here. It is the desert. Oh, I see it. It's right up ahead. Wow. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Well, somebody was saying, should we even post this video? You know, it's already out there, but uh, and I think the people who would come out here and look at this uh, Chuck Walla Bill's cabin, this structure out here, uh, the type of people who would make this trek would not be the type of people who are gonna deface it and write graffiti all over it. I mean, you gotta walk a long ways and it's a, a, it's a tough hike to get here. 
Anyway, here's where the waterfall used to be. There's no water right now, but during the rainy season, I'm sure it's flowing like crazy. structure called it home and it was a beautiful area and look how close the the mountain is right next to him here he had that to look at every day what do you think Linda? Cool. I love it I just think that it's Amazing. Read about it for two years and you bought me the Desert Hot Springs history book that gave me more insight. And I kept talking about it, bragging about it, asked some of the locals. Nobody had been here. Nobody knew where it was. A lot of people didn't know anything about it. But we persisted and persisted and today we made it up here. I hope we make it back home. <laughs> okay, so... We're gonna go back down the hill, back down the trail. But man, this was cool, very cool. And uh, what a great place to live, you know? I can appreciate it. Look at the surroundings he's got. Can you imagine him sitting at his doorway on his porch or whatever there, maybe roasting up a little lizard for dinner. And he's got this beautiful, beautiful wall of canyon to look at and the sun's reflecting off it and I can feel warmth from it too so yeah it was a good hike now how does this fit into the RV adventures big and small well this is an adventure now we didn't RV to get here but we RV to get out to uh, uh, Indio California and uh, this is just one of the things you do when you're out there in an area. You look up hikes you can take. Now this hike I wouldn't recommend to most people. It was pretty strenuous. Um, hopefully going down my hips are not going to be screaming. They feel like they're bleeding inside, but of course, you know, that's me exaggerating. Um, so anyway, yeah, very cool. Here's some of the tin that came off his roof. <clears throat> Some wood came out of the structure, probably for the uh, roof again. There's some more wood there. Well, we made it back. And uh, it turned out to be about 11 miles round trip. And we were started out at about 1,500 foot of altitude, ended up at uh, 2,700 foot of altitude. So it was a climb the whole way up. Um, it was a little easier coming back down, although my feet are killing me now and my hips. So maybe the hot tub and I got a beer that's waiting for me. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, be sure to uh, subscribe and be sure also to click like. That helps us. And uh, we'll see you on the next adventure. Thanks.